I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Jace is back. I'm back. Jace, you've been, people have been missing you. They're saying like, where is Waldo? Where is Jace? Uh, it got back, and you know, Zach hadn't been here. I don't. He, you know, once he became a movie mogul, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever see him again. Was he here when I wasn't? No. Oh my. He was God. gone the entire time, and so it was. It was down to the square, back to base square of me and Dad. <laughs> Should we do? Missing posters? I think we should. That? Missing. Missing. Zach Dasher. Does anybody know where Zach is? But Matt, Dad and I, uh, we were kind of, you know, at the helm here, but we had some fantastic guests on. To yeah, talk. I saw your, I appreciate you including me. Yeah, in. I want you to know what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, but look, we went from, we went from, you know, local family with Philip and Cy, Mom and Lisa, to Kirk Cameron, to the guy that sings for Skillet. <laughs> Have you ever heard the Skillet? I had heard that before, but I just... You know, I sent a, I sent a note to... I think Bill. I met him somewhere. He's a great guy. I sent a note to uh, Billy Loveland. I said, are you familiar with... And I knew he would, because Billy's an old rocker. You know, he's old ACDC Rush kind of guy, but he loves Christian music rocking, too. And I said, have you ever heard of Skillet? So he immediately sends a picture back with John Cooper's wife, <laughs> the guy's wife that was on the podcast, because she sings in the band, too. And he said, they're awesome. And I said, well, we just had John Cooper on the podcast. And I was like, he was amazing. So, Jason, in your absence, we did have some really, really good discussions. But since we're all back together, because I know you're full of stories, which I told the Unashamed Nation, the reason we send you out like that so you can come back with stories to regale us with yeah. of your conquest. But before we do that, I have a special gift that I have that I did for both of you. Uh-oh. And I'm going to present it right here on Unashamed Nation. So now if you're listening, you're not going to be able to see this. I'll try my best to describe it. If you're watching, you're going to see it. So hang on. We have gifts. It's in an ice chest. I like gifts that are in an ice chest. Oh, my goodness. So this wow. is my my famous cherry cream cheese pie. Whoop. Careful there. That was almost <laughs> could have uh, been a disaster. Uh, there it is. So it's got the key is what's really made it like has matured the pie is the crust. It's kind of a crumbly. Um, I roast pecans and mix well, them Well, before you give the recipe, because I think we should. Al, this has become over the last. Well, I guess I can't count the first 10 years of my life because we just ate whatever we could find. So I'd say the last 44 years of cuisine, this has made, it was almost like a billboard and it just started inching its way up. And I would say number one pie So for me. So m- mom made it originally. I've I've taken it to another level. I, and mom will admit if mom were here, she would agree with that because I I started messing with the crust and all that. But so this is Jace and Dad. I think they're one of their favorite pies. So I already gave Dad his. So I, I made one for you, Jace, That's and fantastic. one for Dad. Dad's already partaken. Dad was it? Did he get a thumbs up? I know. Pies there he is. So he he's he's Dad said, "Is this thing cold?" I said, "It's ice cold." <laughs> It's literally well, nice. I appreciate So I made y'all these because, one is because we're all back together. I won't be here Thanksgiving because I'm going on a cruise with Lisa. And so normally I cook them for Thanksgiving. So since I couldn't make them for Thanksgiving, I decided to give y'all one. And Carly, fourth generation dad, well, I said, what, what do you want? What do you want for your birthday? She said, I want one of your cream cheese pies. So now we're into, she's 18 uh, this week, and she said that's what she wanted. Those so kind of pies... You know, reach out for hearts. <laughs> <laughs> they reach out for a heart. Well, I really missed y'all. Here. What, you know what's crazy? You know what's really crazy is I've been here five minutes. Uh, for you who are wondering, our prep time is, are y'all ready? <laughs> yep. But I've been here for five minutes on the premises. Chase is like, why are we doing on Sunday? Because we're doing, going Sunday. Today. I just preached like an hour ago. I was preaching. I, I was going to bring that up. Because, uh, you know, we do two podcasts at a time. You're you're hearing them, what, three days apart, Maddie? Three days apart? Yeah. Oh, she gave a, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a hey. hand, three or four. Monday, two. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Oh, okay. That's Maddie, by the way. That's the release. 
Yeah, so so we do two on Monday, two on Tuesday, and then they release next Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Those shouldn't four. shouldn't we have announced this before our eight hundredth episode? <laughs> that, how they're released? I mean, people may want to. <laughs> I think know we that. have. To. But what I was going to say is, I've only been here five minutes, and I've received two gifts, and they were both in an ice chest. Really? <laughs> oh yeah! Right before I walked in here, I received another gift, and it was in an ice chest. So. The, the, can you a, tell you were missed? There's a there's a Yeti ice chest right out there in the middle of the where everybody parks. That I'll be taking that with me. But uh, hear me, your son-in-law, yeah, yep. shot me a nice little little deer because this week is Thanksgiving week in our time. Yeah, come, it'll be come, airing after, but yeah, yeah, we're, come, we're come going on. into Thanksgiving. So I didn't know you were going to be around. I'm I'm leaving. That's why we're doing extra. So I brought in a replacement family for y'all without knowing <laughs> they were replacing you because I thought you would be here. <laughs> so the Langhoffers, now you remember Trent? He's been on our podcast before. I love me some Langhoffer. He's uh, we're really good friends. We went and saw them in Colorado maybe a month or two ago, and uh, I spoke. At, at his men's group at his church a couple times. And uh, so he's coming back and spending Thanksgiving week with us, yep. his whole family. I know it. I'm excited. Uh, three kids. He's yeah. preaching next well, Is Sunday. it true that they, they uh, someone who reached out to him, he was, had a, he was camped out at, Underneath a bridge. Oh, he, well, I thought about him today. He lived. When well, Al, his story was amazing. Al was preaching. So they're at, at WFR. Al's preaching through Luke because we're, if you hadn't figured this out, Al's getting all his material. <laughs> this is the, my sermon prep. In the podcast. <laughs> so he does, because Al, you said you did 26 events this week, which made me tired. I mean, not uh, this year. This year, yeah. Yeah, so that made me tired just thinking about it. <laughs> but uh, it was an excellent sermon. And and I think uh, Trent and his family, they were going to stay with us a few days, but then they got wind that he was coming into town, so now he's preaching. He's next preaching Sunday. next Sunday. Yeah, I'm super excited. So he's going to hang out. So that's why I wanted the deer. So I kind of dropped a hint to Jay, like I'm out of town because I've been on the road for ten days, I guess, almost two weeks. Yeah, two, and I'll tell you why. Because I mean, I love Unashamed Nation. Uh, y'all support us, and you're our family. So I really geared the last two months of this filming. The, the Duck Family Treasure Show to end the day before duck season. But do you realize how difficult that is to do? Because I can't say that. I can't say, hey, guys, hey, executives, hey, production company, <laughs> hey, family. Hey, hey uh, crew of 25. Yeah, crew of 25. I'm not missing duck season. So whatever we got to do, we need to fit. So I had to cleverly and creatively maneuver the schedule around so that no matter what happens Friday night I am in West Monroe Louisiana and when you know it late Friday I came rolling in via Knoxville Tennessee through Nashville for a day and a half yep. to make it here I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning a couple mornings in a row just to get everything done and get here but then we celebrated Opening day of duck season, so that'd be yesterday for us. Yep. Which was a fine little hunt. Oh, it was good. I was shocked because look, so I'm so when y'all are hunting, I'm driving yesterday right down from Missouri, right down this. I split Arkansas right down the middle. I pass rice fields, open slicks of water, and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. I did not see one duck. In the state of Arkansas. So I saw about eight million blackbirds. And I, I, I told Lisa, Lisa was asking me, but she said, what do you keep looking for? So I'm looking for ducks. I mean, I'm literally going down 67. There's rice fields on both sides. Yeah. And it was nothing. And I said, I bet they got skunked down on the property today. I said, I bet it had to be. Too. I kept seeing these guys coming Amazingly, out. Amazingly, it was, it was a I know, it was as fine. Good, good little hunt. I yeah, would say it was top five was opening shot. days in the history of our hunting down there. I mean, the total number is like 27 ducks. But we, we only hunted until 8.30, I mean, yeah. for all practical purposes. It was heavy on the gadwall, the crazy gadwall. Oh, so it's an early gadwall. Yeah. Oh, and we just, everybody, 
was caught up in the hysteria. Everybody had duck fever this year, which was unusual. You know, Cy didn't hunt last year. Right. And his, he was first in I line. I was out too because I had that. And then Dad missed the, most of the back. broke his yeah. back. So it was it was a really frustrating year last year. And we, we didn't have a good opening day. I think we shot five or yeah, so yeah, right. And uh, so we we hammered them. It was heavy on the gadwalls. So I was first in line. And so I, I have to admit, was his, his old self. Uh, he claimed every duck, which means he should be in a jail cell somewhere. What was funny was every time Cy si would be the only one. Who would shoot? You notice they didn't fall then. Listen, I was fortunate enough to, to you wonder where the people are listening out there. A woman about my age said, we came from north, south, now it's South Carolina, you know. She said, we come over here. She said, because don't let them fool you. That, that they are, you're right about them phones, about them telephones. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, you found you a fan. Oh, the the oh, infamous that's... analogy, Phil, the only human on the planet to come up with a new slogan, which feels hard to do to come up with something <laughs> that no one has ever come up with. Right. And, and for you that missed that podcast a few podcasts ago, Phil said, say no to the cellophone and yes to the telephone. <laughs> That's what he said. That's yeah, so I Phil was... Movement. I, I'm going to start a movement. <laughs> And so he now has one the follower. The problem with his movement is nobody will know because they don't have any way to know he's talking. <laughs> they don't have a well, telephone. Well, too busy Unless he telephone. calls you directly on a landline you just put in, you'll never know about that. Well, Phil movement. wants to bring back the landline. And so, you know, it's a noble request, but he does have one follower. And how old did you say she was? She's about my age. 75. <laughs> so... uh you got to start slow. Been younger, we don't want to hurt it. <laughs> so I have to tell you this story. Um, he didn't do a day over sixty five. So, so we 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 wrapped our uh, what they call principal photography. We're starting a movement where you, the <laughs> telephones, the majority of them He's back are on, just boy. that telephones. Yeah, give uh, transfer but, information, but no pictures of all these women. All right, we not, we got no it. We, let's we not relive it. it. I don't include uh, that. <laughs> this is uh, hello, how you doing? I just want to remind you, know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I want to share that story with you if you'll if you'll uh, allow me. Godly women <laughs> like the idea of telephone. Because we had an embarrassing moment, Al, that I'd like to share. So okay. we we finished the principal photography for all these episodes. You know, we did thirty episodes this year. Which means you're not quite done. It just means you got all the main stuff. Done. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there, there's some more filming to take place. But right. we, the goal was finish. What the, and what I mean by principal photography is like where we, they just show us hunting, yeah. and we just creatively, collaboratively come up with. Still got to do pickups, back scenes, interviews, interviews, yeah. stuff like that. I got it. So, uh, so we finished that. And then we drove to Nashville because uh, we were invited to the Patriot Awards, uh, which is a fun. Oh, I so wanted to ask you about that, too, because I didn't see as much this year as I normally do because we were on the road. Way better this yeah. year. Oh, good. And, uh, what they, it was, in, was, was it because it was in Nashville or just because? I, you know, personally, yes. I mean, Nashville is... It's part of the flyover states, I yeah. think, that is so forgotten. And, you know, of course, all the the event everybody had cowboy hats on i looked about like i do right now i mean missy picked out my outfit yeah. which was a blue suit suit coat and some blue of those funny pants that people wear you know funny pants well they look like suit pants like you wear them when you wear a suit or whatever yeah, i don't, I don't get i don't get out enough to look at that <laughs> no well i don't know like like you know people who wear suits yeah to me that material is funny it, it's like <laughs> Like it, funny, ha ha, funny, or what kind of like uh, when you wear a suit? Those pants yeah. have no purpose in anything that I would ever do in the outdoors. I would rip those things to shred. They're they're shreds. Well, they're you're not right because you you bend down quickly or whatever. You can rip them. Yeah, so I never figured out figured out how that caught right, on. Hang on. Let's take our first break. So as we're uh, getting to the end of the year, we start thinking about next year financial decisions, things that you want to. Uh, take into account. Lisa and I have done the same thing. And we pretty much made a decision that uh, we were paying so much in health insurance that we wanted to do something different. And so we were guided to uh, a sponsor of our podcast. We found out about it here on the Unashamed Podcast called Samaritan Ministries. And what we love about it is it's a, it's a Christian community. 
Uh, so when you have medical needs, uh, fellow members send money directly to you to help you pay your medical bills. And you'll do the same with them. And also there's prayer and encouragement. The other day, Lisa called them. Uh, we were on the road someplace. We had a question and the uh, the person on the other end was courteous and great and answered it and then offered to pray for us and did on the phone. And so that's never happened in all the history of dealing with anybody. Uh, so that's one of the things I loved about them. There's no networks, uh, which puts us in control of our family's health uh, care situation. Uh, you get to choose your doctors, your hospitals, your treatments. Uh, you can uh, join today, uh, start health care sharing with Samaritan Ministries the day you complete your membership application, or you get to choose what month you want to start. It's not insurance, it's different. It's assurance that you're part of a health care sharing community. It's a biblical solution to health care. We love it. It's affordable. Uh, it's much cheaper than what we were paying before. So whether it's a broken bone, an unexpected diagnosis, or other medical emergency, you'll find comfort knowing you're connected to 80,000 Christian households across the nation who stand ready to care for one another spiritually and financially during a time it's needed the most. Become part of this community today at SamaritanMinistries.org slash unashamed. That's SamaritanMinistries.org slash unashamed. So anyway, we, we, we film our last episode, and then we go to Nashville, and uh, so we went to that. But the, the gist of it is they honor ordinary people who do extraordinary things. Yep. So they call it Patriot Awards because you're, you're, they're, you know, you're, you were a hero for doing extraordinary things. Like they had a uh, young, young kid, well, he was 17 now. When he was 10 years old, he was visiting his grandpa's grave from World War II. And he just looked around because obviously his grandpa was in a cemetery where there were a lot of other World War II veterans. And he just thought, there's no flowers or flags here. He, he, he as a ten year old kid, he was moved, and so he just started a one man uh, band of honoring World War II veterans. Good for him. That's well, look, fantastic. he's been doing it for seven years all across the country. He and he's met so many, you know, living veterans, and uh, he just he puts a flag and flowers on their graves, and you know, says a few words. So they gave him an they gave him an award. I mean, it was a for being a patriot. Yeah. I mean, uh, stuff like that. But so it was it was really good. And so, but what I was going to say is, so we were down with all their uh, celebrities. You know, they yeah, we Fox have a News show yeah on, on Fox Nation, and uh, so Missy, as soon as the show was over, because because you're being filmed not directly, but the the show is live and they're filming it. Well, right. you don't want to be sitting there on your phone, right? So like we turn our phones off and have it nowhere around us. And so Missy, as soon as it was over, she's like, "Your mom has called me the entire show." And I was like, "What?" So what, of course, what do you think? And you're I, worried like something. Well, happened. then I'm worried. I was like, "Well, for mom to call that many times, something is wrong." So I said, "Well, let me call her." Well, so we called. And she's like, well, your dad was trying to get a hold of you. And I was like, well, let me talk to him. She's like, well, he's in the bed now. <laughs> so then I realized, okay, it wasn't an emergency because he's gone to sleep. Yeah, right. And she's like, she's like, well, there were two two points that he wanted to talk to you about. And I, was, I thought, well, give them to me, you know. And she said, well, we were trying to watch you at the event that you were at, and we couldn't figure out where to watch it at. <laughs> They couldn't find. The so I said, well, let me get this station. right. You were trying to call me to figure out how to watch the event. <laughs> and you're doing the event. I'm at the event, so I can't. No, I have one of those wonderful boxes to hold in your hand. Remote control? Yeah. yeah. I have a, just a plethora of them. But unfortunately for me, I mean... The, the things. A plethora of wonder boxes. Yeah, you, you you can't get your information. It started out. The guy walks out, with, you know, with with the, who was the the, the Hagseth. Yeah, Hagseth. He walks out, walks out, says about three sentences, and we're all sitting there, you know. I said, yeah, we may catch Jason and him on, you know, maybe they'll get on for a few lines. Yeah. So we're looking at it, but all of a sudden, the entire apparatus 
on the telephone, telephone, <laughs> on the cellophone. I looked up there, it just went plump, and it just was a round circle. <laughs> they just started doing that. The they never, they never came up with anybody after that. You lost. It, it your, was just a station with that on it. You lost your wife. Making a round circle. You lost your signal, Phil. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> So the other issue, we know that circle. Somebody is. just shut it off. So the other issue he wanted to talk to me about was, uh, like where we're gonna hunt. Of course, I hadn't been there in ten days. Yeah. Jay was scouting, so I thought it was hilarious that I thought. Now this is this is cell phone problems That's right cool. here. I mean, it was we laughed about that. Oh my goodness. So your problem is, Dad, you don't have a. A land connection. You've, it's yours is satellite, Elon Musk. But well, the problem old, is, we might already get to the Bible. The, the, this... the worst thing you could ever do would be like Phil Robertson when he was a dad and he had children. Well, y'all were the children. So if you disrespected Miss K, your mother, I'd put a belt on your butt. Uh -huh. About three licks on that one. Mm -hmm. You know, and another one was tearing up perfectly good equipment yep. for no good reason. That was out. Y'all remember that? I, I didn't agree well. with that one. And look, and now they said, you don't get it, son. You don't get it, old man. <laughs> you know, they, they, what, you're, what you're contemplating old and man. what you're talking about is illegal. <laughs> you're breaking the law if you put a belt on your sons. Yeah. I said, no, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I'm uh, telling you. I'm noticing that that really is good law. It's no belts, but the 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 uh, fruit of the tree is not very good. No, Phil, you had good. three deal. If we disrespected our mom or, or you know, authority, we, we got three legs. Uh, if there was bloodshed and the altercation among the brothers. Yeah, meat popping. There, there was, but then yeah. you had that third one, which I thought, I don't agree with that, because if we tore uh, if we were to tear up perfectly good equipment. The problem was we were really poor, and the equipment we had was made in China, and it had a... <laughs> well, it's it, no good any good anyway. Well, just tear up the rest I'm of like, it. why am I being spanked? Jason was going at the, what she said. We said he, he tended to lean toward the legal description. What exactly do you mean by perfectly good? Because there's where we got a problem. Now, Cy told me one time in my defense after he witnessed uh, when I got a spanking for breaking a, a boat paddle. And Cy said, snake, hey, he said, hey, he got it wrong on that one. He said, you killed a Congo because I killed a, a, a snake yep. that was in close proximity. I could have died. You and he, perfectly he, good boat paddle. But kill a snake. Yeah. But Sai yeah. said that boat paddle was made in China. A piece means of junk. It was a piece of junk. <laughs> See, your dad got it wrong on that one, and I'm just telling you, don't don't be bitter about it. And I said well, I appreciate it. But since you'll never see the episode Sai was on, I was going to mention a couple of things to you, Jay, that you'll like. One is he was promoting your show, his show too, because he's on the show. He was talking because mom had cooked. There was a scene where she cooked some squirrel and dumpling. Yeah, and they had just filmed it. So he and Philip were talking about that. I thought that was cool because she was kind of teaching uh, my wife and Jessica how to how do to do it. it. Okay, so he mentioned that, and then so that got us into squirrel hunting. So we told some squirrel hunting tales, and then Sai told the story about when he said he got twenty seven, and I was like, "Boy, Sai, twenty seven squirrels." He said, "Nope, snakes." He said, I went in, I killed 27 snakes, and that was all I killed. I said, well, you were looking down the whole time. Yeah, instead and, of looking up. That's so he funny. told that whole story. It was pretty funny. But then at the end of it, before we got to it, because Dad was finally like, Dad was like, okay, when we get into the Bible. And so, because I was so excited, because I sent them notes. We were we actually talked about the rich young ruler. And I said, you're getting to plow, you're getting to detect new ground that Jace has not been to yet. Because oh. you get your first shot at it. He was so excited. But he, we talked about the movie a little bit. And he mentioned, because I said, Si, the main thing I hear from people about you in the movie is that they are seeing a side of you they never knew. Because, you know, in the movie, he's kind of contemplative and like, yeah. you know, he's concerned. And uh, he said, really? And so then he went on a rant, didn't he, Dad? About how that I mean the man has repented. It's time to move on. So I don't. Somebody must have said something to him about how bad Dad was because he went on about a four minute defense of Dad rant that was he was banging the table and yeah. I, I finally was like, okay, so let's let's get to this text because you're you're starting to. But scare if you me. look carefully, when someone uh, 
straightens up and asks for forgiveness and embraces the gospel of Jesus, we, we, you need to support that little movement there. Absolutely. Sure. Well, that was the whole point of it. It was we've been doing this now. There's 50 years of track record. Yep. I think I think it it stuck is the point. So, and speaking of text, um, we're going to get back into the rich young ruler. We kind of got into it. It's kind of funny though. Us doing the Bible study with Sai and Philip, but they were they were good. They they had some good points to make. So, uh, let's take a break and then we'll dive in. So we're always looking for some uh, unique Christmas ideas. And um, something that, you know, you can really enjoy for longer than just the moment. My grandkids, so many times what they get, they enjoy for about 10 minutes, and then that's the end of it. Uh, So one of our sponsors, Brave Books, has a great idea. They have the Freedom Island Book Club. And so it's something you're going to get all year. Every month you're going to get a new book that's going to bring a new value, gives you something to look forward to, read it with your kids. Uh, Missy is one of the authors has written a, a book. Also, we just had Kirk Cameron on recently to talk about his latest book, The Fox, The Fair, and The Invention Scare. And, um, you know, he loves these guys. Kirk's doing a lot of work around the country uh, to help children, whether it's in schools or, you know, things that they're reading. Uh, it's really good. So we want to say, we want to encourage you guys uh, to to look into getting this for someone you love, maybe yourself, or maybe it's something you want to give as a gift. Uh, Brave Books, the Freedom Island Book Club. You subscribe right now if you go to bravebooks.com. You get Brave's newest book for free for a limited time when you subscribe. Use the code UNASHAMED and you're going to get 20% off your subscription. So this is literally a gift that you can give all year long. That's bravebooks.com. Use the code UNASHAMED for 20% off your subscription. All right, so we're in um, Luke 18. We are, but, you know, a lot of what you preached on Luke 15, I noticed resurfaced when we get yeah. to Luke 19. Yep. But but also a few things. We've kind of dealt with it in between, too. Yeah. I even mentioned in my sermon today Luke 16 because I think you made the original point, Jazz, on the podcast. The worldview of the, of the Pharisee and the false narrative that they had that you only showed signs of piety and blessing if you were rich and nothing was wrong with you. Like you didn't have any physical maladies or whatever. Yeah, I got that from Tim Keller. That was he, really good. And he I'm, does and a I'm good job of giving you the context of what they were thinking in that world. And that was that was a huge one. It's like if you're healthy and you have money, well, God's for you. He's rewarding you for, yep. your, for your goodness. And when Jesus makes this profound statement at the beginning of, of the rich young ruler conversation. I mean, you got to remember he, he, he had just talked about this, the difference in the Pharisee and the tax collectors prayer. You know, here's this, here's this Pharisee saying, Oh, you know, I, I, he prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like all these other people, you know, and I fast twice and I give a tent. So he's doing all that. And that's that same kind of seed there. I'm successful, therefore you have found, I have found favor with you and earned your blessing. And to hell with the rest of them. That's it, literally. Exactly. Yeah. And so then he even talked, you know, he brought up about receiving the kingdom like little children. And then all of a sudden he says there was a certain ruler asked him, so, so a certain ruler, so this is a guy with power, and obviously money is power. And you're going to see that even as we get to Zac- Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Yep. If you were a tax collector, you were powerful. Yep. And so setting the context, you know, they were under Roman rule. And these Jews who were tax collectors were, I mean, it's almost like a, you know, I think it helps you understand if you look at it like the mafia. They're kind of the Roman bag men mm-hmm. who are being rewarded handsomely for collecting all this money. So they become powerful. And what do they do? Well, then they start picking what women they want. And, uh, you know, they had a reputation yep. for being, you know, extremely sexually immoral because they're powerful people. That's right. And they're justifying it all 
by saying, well, if God w- was not for me, how come he's giving me all this money? That, that was kind of how their mind worked. But then Jesus makes a very profound statement. I, mean, I thought about this when I read it. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. Because the, the ruler said, good teacher. What must I do to inter- eternal what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone, which is kind of a confusing thing to say because you're like, well, isn't Jesus good? Well, of course he's good. But from his perspective, how does he know that he's the son of God in this moment? So Jesus turns his attention to there's no one good except God alone. But just think of the gravity of that statement because he that's flying in the face of well i must be good because god is blessing me i have all this money exactly i'm i'm perfectly healthy don't you think oh yeah i mean did y'all talk about that one little sentence it is uh, confusing it is uh and i even said what you said originally a minute ago when we talked about it before that I think Jesus was already setting up what he was going to do because he knew he was good because he was the son of God. He's described by Jesus as in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. Well, yeah, back to that. Pretty other, tough back position. to Luke 18. Right. Yeah. Well, I think in this case, though, so I think he's setting it up just with the idea that He's like, he knows that he's not, I mean, Jesus knows what's about to happen. He's going to lay out a a, a situation for this guy. He's not going to do it. So he's going to basically reject he who is good because of his misunderstanding of what good really is. And so I think Jesus is setting him up when he, when he says it that way. That's what I, that's what my opinion of what happened. Well, it makes sense though. The reason I brought up the Pharisee and the tax collector and, and their different prayers is because that Pharisee, in his prayer, it's a subtle message of, I'm better than other people. Yeah. It, well, just think how many problems are caused in our world by people thinking that they're better than other people. Whew. Just just list the reasonings oh on goodness. why they think that. That's, That's why right. you see so many clans and so many movements and so many groups that they, they get together, and then you see the mayhem and the misery right. that they, they project. Well, and every war is fought by people who think they're right yeah. on either side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're That's think- why this was such a profound statement. Yeah. No one is good except God alone. And I think Luke I think put it here people- right after the children. You say, well, what about children? There's a difference in being innocent and being good. Yeah. That's so right. God is good. Adult humans are not. Right. That's what he's saying. Right. And so that but the rich young ruler, he 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 comes back because he when Jesus said says that, he's like, Well, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, don't don't give false testimony, honor your father and mother. Look look what now, happened when you get a man, then a group of people, and a, then a culture of people. And, and that submit to Adolf Hitler. Yeah, well, exactly. And why? What was and, the and crux of that? Whatever they they, they thought they were better than other people. Well, we're back right. in that territory again. I'm sorry to say they what? got themselves in a position where they said our race of people, an Aryan race of people, is better than anybody else on the planet. And you said, "What are you going to do with the rest of them? Kill them? Kill them? Because they exactly. can't live up to our standard." You say we 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 would never embrace anything something like that. Go to your major universities and take a look Still at what they're saying. That's exactly right. So Jesus asked this, you know, he makes this statement about, you know, the commandments. And I find this fascinating. This is fascination number two, because the rich young leader said, well, all these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. Now, I think 99.9999% of all other teachers uh, and people would say, well, wait a minute here. No, no. What what are you saying? You're perfect? Because Jesus just said, no one is good except God alone. He lists how many commandments there? He lists five. He lists five. And he lists the five relational 
uh, commandments. Uh, this is interesting. He didn't list the ones about put God first. You can find a movement. Now, you how, can find movements behind such as this. Yeah, that's right. So how many laws were there in the Old Testament? Six hundred and right. uh, so he listed five of them. He listed five of the the Big Ten is what he did. Well, five of the Big Ten. Okay. Yeah. So, but you. So instead of Jesus doing what most people would do, which is say, so, wait a minute, you're not being. You are you saying you're perfect? You know, we would try to find the ones legally where he has broken. Yeah. Because we know all people are sinners. That's a That at least claim to be perfect. Yeah. Instead and I, of and doing I'm, that. And Jason, I'm willing to bet if he had done that, this man would have said, well, no, I, I, I've, I'm not perfect. I, I, exactly. I mean, at he, some point, you're going to hit a nerve because we all know that they're, and, and that's what makes people who follow Jesus really smart because we know there are no perfect adults in our world, nor has there been. That is correct. Outside of Jesus. That is correct. You will make a mistake. You you will do wrong. Which is why there was only one. Let's take another break. So what I find fascinating about Jesus, which shows you his character and his reflection of God's character, is he doesn't continue a legal argument. He makes a totally different argument That's and right. goes to the heart of this man, which shows you this idea of of God pursuing relationships with human beings because he knows what his problem is and he's not going to waste any time having a legal argument or trying to trap him. He says, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still like one thing, <laughs> sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Now, that was much better for a culture to be that way. Well, but Jesus quoted something that wasn't a law. That, no. that is n nowhere written. Mm -mm. So you could, if you go to the Old Testament, Old Testament history, you will find the general rule of a follower was the one tenth of your mm -hmm. wealth is what you're to get, what you're to tithe. So you know, and he even made a point, Jace. I think we've already talked about it, where he said, "You Pharisees, you go in, you get your tenth of your spices and your tenth of this, and you're measuring it all out, but then you don't do just the basic." And thing. to this day, you can fix that to where you'll get a constant flow of money that you you never dreamed of. Right. To, to, well, now they, it's this prosperity gospel. Oh if, yeah. If you're, if you're really a son of God, then you should have all this material wealth which is exactly the opposite of what Jesus said in the context here. Exactly. But he didn't say anything bad about what, I mean, other other parables he tells making money is great. So he's not down on money. He's not down no, on wealth. No, but we'll see when we get to Luke uh, 19 in the case of Zacchaeus. Once, and we'll wait before we get there, yeah. but just to make an illustration, when Zacchaeus comes to his senses or in, is pricked by the grace of God, well, he throws out different numbers like, I'm going to give half of my wealth away. And if I've cheated any, anyone, I'm going to give 400, four times yeah. what I cheated, which is 400%. Well, he took that 10% rule <laughs> and blew it out of the water. It, it, it so reminds me of this. I had a conversation one time just because this money in, in both cases comes out here. But I want to say something really profound. I feel like every once in a while we got to take a time out and just say, now, wait a minute. The Bible is about Jesus. That's, that's what the Bible's about. Yeah. So, because I think when people say, what's the Bible about? And you'll start listening to things. Well, it's about money and, and you know, forgiveness. And I mean, you could just name a hundred times. That's why the Bible is about Jesus and all these things about money. Once you look at it through Jesus' eyes, it starts making more sense. You know, in the middle of all this, that's why Jesus reminds the 12. He says, come in here a minute. After hearing this, after being there, listening to this, seeing what some people are saying, the tax collectors and whatever, we're going up to Jerusalem. Everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man if he be followed, he will be handed over to the Gentile 
they'll mock him, insult him, and they'll spit on him, and they'll flog him, and then they're going to kill him. That's why he interjects that. Here's the problem. It's the whole bunch, all of them, every one of them, to the man. Well, I think— And I, I'm here to solve that problem. But, you know, think about it. If Jesus had been a modern preacher, he might have said— so go sell everything you have, give it to the ministry, <laughs> give it to me, and yeah. then come follow me. But he didn't say that. He said, sell it off, help some people, and then come follow me with nothing. Yeah. That's well, what he told him. But Al, yeah. this is not new. It's not a new revelation. You, remember when we were in Luke 14, and large crowds were, were following, verse 25, and, and he come up with this famous verse that nobody knows what in the world he was talking about when he says, if anyone comes to me and doesn't hate his father and mother, yeah. his wife and children, he cannot be my disciple. And it says, anyone who does not carry his cross, follow me, cannot be my disciple. And in verse 33, he says, in the same way, if any of you who does not give up everything he has, he cannot be my disciple. And you're like, well, this sounds horrible. But it's a power. That's why I made this point about money is power. It was then, and it is now. And part of us surrendering to the creator of the universe is really redefining what power is. Money cannot do anything real powerful if you look at it from a heavenly perspective. It can't raise your body from the ground. The pursuit of money will, will out, outreach them all. Yeah, and so it's not money is a bad thing, but money makes our perspectives harder to see clear the creator of the universe because what it falsely does is give us an idea of power and safety and security. So this this rich young ruler, obviously Jesus had concluded this guy's putting all his security in his money. Well, can money bring you back from the dead? Can money give you a relationship with the Creator? Can money give you a true purpose on the earth? Can it offer you forgiveness from? Can it root, can it can it deliver you from your sin? Exactly. That's why. That's, well, who does that? Only Jesus. That's one of the reasons why. I, let's take our last break. Yes, that's one of the reasons why that the when this happens is so crucial because if you've already amassed something and then you're asked to give it up, it's much harder than think about this, than the man who's already given up everything and then gets blessed with everything. And, and I was thinking about Abraham, Abraham answered the call to follow God and he didn't know where he was going. He didn't know when he would get there. He just answered. He just said, okay. So he gathered up his family and he went over the course of Abraham's life. He amassed a lot, but why did he respond the right way every time, including the last one when he says, kill your own son because I want you to sacrifice? Because he had already given everything up to God before he ever amassed anything. And that really becomes the key to me. If you wait and try to do it the other way around, that's why Jesus said it's harder for the rich man to go through the eye of a needle than to, than, you know, to come into the kingdom because then you think, well, wait a minute, I've got all this stuff. What am I going to do with all my stuff? Yep. Exactly. Well, that's why I think Luke sandwiched this rich young ruler and Zacchaeus, who had a completely different response. Right. Jesus didn't talk to him about his money. He didn't go say sell everything you have. He, uh, he just befriended him and went to his house and risked his reputation for being seen with the tax collector. Yeah. And that moved him so much to where he said, well, I'm going to give half of my stuff away. I mean, don't you think that's ironic that in a span of a few verses yeah. and in between those two stories, you have this picture of Jesus suffering, being killed, being humiliated and coming back on the third day and his disciples not understanding it. And then a blind guy does understand who Jesus is. Right. And he can't see. Well, that's why he highlights Jesus so much. He said, uh, I'm telling you what I've seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Well, back to how Abraham got worked in here. Abraham's our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you're determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham 
did not do such things. You're doing the things your own father does. And they said, we're not illegitimate children. They, they protested. The other only father we have is God himself. Well, that's when Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now I'm here. I'm not come on my own. He sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? In other words, you couldn't use Abraham as an example with these people. They said, oh, Abraham's our father. Yeah. But I mean, it was the opposite of what they should have been talking about. That's and, right. And ironically, they Abraham. Abraham, and then they, they didn't trust him. They money. Uh, well, but, but ironically, Abraham was wealthy. Yeah. But he, he had was. the right perspective. That is, that is correct. Because he had already surrendered. And I mean, the whole thing comes down to. Abraham so they, was an example of what they should be, but exactly. they're claiming him, and they're not like he was at all. Well, that's why that's why God used him the way He did, because He actually superseded Moses and the law, because it was always about faith. That's I mean, right. it's not like God didn't know that we couldn't keep the law flawlessly. He knew He made us. I mean, He knew He gave us that choice today. When I was preaching days, I made that point about the Father giving away the His the share of inheritance to the young son. And and we would have all said... Jesus said their father was the devil. Exactly. That's pretty true. We tough. would have all said, well, that's... Why should we ever do that? That's a bad call. You know they're not going to be smart enough to deal with it, right? We're still trying to do it for them. What God says is, you have to make your own call. You decide what's going to rule your life. And if it's the love of money and possessions, it will always be that that rules your life. So in no, this particular guy with this situation, he said the way you can achieve what you're looking for is get rid of all of it. And they're out yep. to kill the Savior of the world. Yep. Well, then, so let me finish reading this. So then after he makes this profound statement, the man's face fell, verse 23, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. So then he gets back to his original journey to Jerusalem, which is to proclaim he's him. he's right at the door. He's almost there. Yeah, as yeah. the son of God and the king is here. And it says, indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, well, who then can be saved, which goes back to the point we were making, because they were under the impression that if you're really wealthy, then God has favor on you. That's right. But he was saying the exact opposite. They're That's like, right. well, who's in then? <laughs> so Jesus replied, which I think goes back to the original question that when that ruler asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I think it all came to a head right here when Jesus said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. Because there is nothing that you can individually do to get your sins removed, to repair the relationship with God, because he's a God of 100% holiness. You know, sin separates us from God. There's nothing that man can do to beat death on their own. That's great. And so he's introducing the supernatural ability and the transforming power that God is offering through his eternal love for every individual. And to go back to our sermon today on Luke 15, that's why Jesus is here. Yep. He came to rescue and repair and make Sword. eternal those relationships with people. So Peter said, well, we've left all we had to follow you. And I really think this is interesting because he said, I tell you the truth. Jesus said, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much. Now, I love this. This is good. In this age and in the age to come, eternal life. And that's the aspect of the kingdom that we presented those. We did about three podcasts on in that even though it may not look like you have material possessions and all this. Those who surrender to Jesus become part of a family. They become part of what we call the church. It's spirit-filled people. It's not about buildings. and So you're part, and, and uh, when he goes, when he says wife or brothers or parents, you know, or children, and some of these other uh, versions of the, the rich young ruler, 
will say homes and and all this stuff because then you bec- you become part of a people who are generous to each other in the kingdom in the church. Yep. Don't you think that's what he means? Absolutely. And I think part of that thing that's in this life, this age, as well as the one to come, which I, I do think he's talking about in this life or the next, is that once your once your view changes of what's important, the things you gain that are worth treasure are different than what they used to be. I mean, now when I see a person, I see a changed life. I was talking today about a couple in our church that do our marriage ministry. When I look at their life, when I watch them, when I see them operate, I get a a warmth in my soul that's worth more to me than somebody handing me a check or saying, here, go do this thing. Because you begin to appreciate the things of heaven more than you appreciate the things of earth. So I think that's what he means as much as anything. That's oh, I agree. Lesson. Well, you're part of a group of people where truly what yours is, What's yours is theirs, and what's theirs is yours. Now, some people try to take advantage of that. Con men are broken. There, sure. There's hypocrisy in churches. But that's why we give. That's why you have a contribution. Yeah, put it's this be- put this money to work, Jesus told that guy, until I come back. Yeah. But my Thanks. point is, this, the purpose of this section is not to tell you what you should do with your money. Now, I've heard hundreds of sermon, sermons on it. The purpose is to show you how you should respond to Jesus. That's it. It's about Jesus's character. Then it, once you do that, it changes your opinion of money providing security. It's really about it, surrender. If this young man had been able to surrender himself to Jesus in this moment, he would not have went away sad. He would have said, I tell you what, Jesus, I'm going to go do exactly what you said. I'll be. I'll meet you here tomorrow. Or I'll meet you here next week when I got all that out of my life. Yep. That yep. would have been the answer for, for the right response. Exactly. Instead, he went away sad. Well, in our overtime, I'm going to tell a story where I, well, I worked as an intern for a couple of years at an organized church back when I was in my early 20s. Yep. I was there. I was there. And I'm going to tell you the story that I have with church leadership that provided this response to the church Turn leadership. it on. Make sure it's turned on the bus. And it was it was all about should we c- continue doing sermons about giving ten percent, and uh, so I'm going to share that story because it <laughs> it was it was a suitcase. Uh, I will um, give you a tease on the tease. It was a suitcase. I will it give was you a suitcase a, illustration. I will give you a tease on the tease. The reason Jace it didn't work out for him in organized ministry is because these are the things he got into. The story he's about to tell. So. But you'll find it humorous. It is good. All right, we'll see you in overtime. You want to hear this story, blazetv.com slash unashamed. We'll talk a little bit more about the this and the rich young ruler. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.